The Inside for me is is a violent, visceral, horror film, psychological horror film, and I it, it's it's violent, but it's not um, it's not gory. It's more about what you don't see. Um, it was meant to be a kind of a cross between a, a, a thriller building a violent kind of dark thriller building up into a horror. Okay. Can you just take it off, Kara? Um, I don't want to break it. Jesus, there you go. So. How do you know it's on? Did you see that flashing light? Yeah. That means it's fucking on. The style of the film was, uh, was handheld camera, and the idea was meant to be that the actors were actually using the camera themselves. So the film was structured so that the camera was never seen as being a device. It would be part of the actual film, part of the actual characters, what they were doing physically. It follows initially a slight drama, you know, it makes sense the girls filming each other, then it becomes a, a violent thriller, so the homeless guys then use the camera. Um, otherwise it would become superfluous because well, you know, they needed a reason to use it. And then it became plot driven through needing the light and to, uh, for when the horror creature arrives. So then the camera actually became the light. And that was important to me that the camera was not simply just there and suddenly, oh, you're filming. Uh, the way I filmed it was, I filmed everything by standing beside the actor. So whoever was act, whoever was meant to be holding the camera would stand beside me and act. And then Brendan was beside me at sound. And it also meant that then I was allowed, able to uh, direct within the scene because as everyone's play, each take was really a minimum of six to ten minutes. So it meant that people were allowed to act and, and react and kind of get really into it properly. And then I could actually push and it dictate who I wanted to pick up the camera next. And then I could decide where I was going to go and what was going to happen. Okay, now, 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 now with this, right, when you've got the camera, if I move, you just go with me. Okay. Okay. And if I decide I'm not going to go in and move it here, you just go with me, just let it flow and just, just kind of see what happens to me. Kind of initiate something that can happen to me. Three, two, one, and action! Hi right, guys! I got the birthday girl! Finding the location was very important, and Frank O'Noonan, the producer, was quite adamant with it. I mean, I, I, I had a couple of places that, that I kind of was okay with, but it, they just didn't quite fit. And so we looked at we looked at the temple, temple theater. We looked at the bar. We looked at these various places, and then we met this guy. And, and when we found this place, we still weren't quite certain of it. Um, it was dilapidated. It needed to be wrecked. It needed to be somewhere we had a lot of rooms it could move through, so you could get lost and be not quite. So you'd lose your your sense of space. I think we found a perfect location that would bring that out of the actors and the crew in in real life. It was this warehouse in Rutland Place, and Eddie, who the owner, was using it to just store antiques and all, all these oh, kind of things. This is all just left here. Yeah, this is all the goat. This is the door for the thing here, but it's locked. Or is it over the other side? That seems to be going outside. What a weird collection of stuff. It's a gold mine. It's a gold mine. Weird place though, weird place. P pity you don't have smell of armor here. Some smell. Eddie had agreed to let us shoot there. We were at the back in the back shed one day. I found this hole in the ground, right? And I said, what's down there? So I got, I got my phone, it was the only one we had, and I got a, a light on the phone, and I jumped down into the hole, and I, I found that it went all the way back, it was in this kind of cavern, cavern thing. And I went down, and uh, apparently, now where we were shooting um, was a, a warehouse that was on a, a back laneway, and it was almost in the back garden of these old Georgian houses that were in Dublin. And apparently these were the old servant passages and it blew my mind because uh, speaking about atmosphere and the times we spoke about atmosphere while we were, we were uh, finalizing the script and doing the actors and, and, and coming up with the sequence of events that to then stumble upon this crypt for want of a better word um, right underneath our feet was just mind blowing and, and straight away I was like we've got to shoot in here. I, we have to do it. And I think I clambered out the hole and I, I nearly had to drag on down. He was scared to go down. Um, I just had a phone light. And uh, once he got down there though and realised what we were actually literally standing on, um, uh, it, it became a no-brainer. We're going to shoot the end of the film down here.
the the crypt was was horrendous. Um, we didn't want to go back down there. I know it's tripe to say that. Uh, yeah, you, you made a horror film and you, and you you were you were haunted. It's not quite that simple. I think there are certain places you go in life where you get a feeling of something. Nothing specifically happened apart from Liam, who who uh, <laughs> Liam O'Rourke is playing the the dead guy, the dead worker. Uh, when Kelly's there, we left him down there for almost 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes at a time. And he, after four takes, didn't want to do it anymore. And he is involved in paranormal investigations because he thought he was talking to a girl. No, 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 The most important, pivotal point of the film is when the homeless guys actually enter, enter the film. Um, because that changes the tone from being uh, a slightly dramatic play between these girls and, and the boyfriend and all that kind of stuff. We want to bring in a bit of the drama with, with, with Sean having sex in Italia. When the homeless guys arrive, the whole tone changes because then it becomes a proper horrific thriller. <laughs> The three actors for the homeless guys, I, I cast because I'd worked with them, Brian and Emmett and Carl, and they're cast in. Uh, they're meant to be a group of, of you know, the, the leader, the older guy, statesman, and the, the doofus to a certain extent. These guys are meant to be the dregs of society, the dregs of modern society, rapists, murderers, killers, thieves, and they are uh, sheltering in this wrecked warehouse. And then they're woken up by the girls, and they come and they do what they do. Now, girls, you're being very rude here. Let me introduce ourselves. I am Emma. This is my good friend Scott. And my other good friend Yui. Hello. Wave to the camera, Yui. I'm a Chase Cannon and I play Huey. Huey is a, an incredibly disturbing, sick sociopath who takes incredible pleasure in uh, tormenting, hurting, raping, and murdering people. Go on, he won't hurt you. Go on, he won't hurt you. <laughs> Woo! Yeah! Uh, let's just say we have take. Magan uh, talks us through it. There's four, there's four spots that you have to hit. You have to hit A, B, C, and D. Between A and B, anything can happen. Between B and C, anything can fucking happen. Between C and D, anything can fucking happen. Who's so long as you. Uh, you you, um, you go with it. I mean, you just all, all you know is that you have to hit these points and everything else is improv. And if you get a great bunch of actors who are willing to go that extra mile, then the sky's your limit. And it is dangerous because sometimes you get lost in, in, in the role. Sometimes you get lost in the take. And I'll tell you something right now. You do not see a cameraman there. You do not see a crew there. When you're gone, Deep in it there, forget it. Uh, you don't see anything. In fact, is there anyone to fucking say that they remember that? And if they do, then then, then they're not in the character. Huey walking down the street, I'd go the other way, I'd run, I'd get the fuck out of there. 
you know, when his back is turned, I'd smack him over the head. Just get the fuck out, man. This guy is a sick, sick son of a bitch. He deserves everything that comes to him. Look at your face, you horny bastard! Horny fucker! I'm not gonna hurt you! Ah! I like to call this game Spin the Slut. Here's the bottle, I spin this, it lands on the slut, and we get the fuck the worm off you. Here's the deal! Three boys, three spins. Are we happy? Are we happy? Are you fucking happy? The the most sensitive scene to shoot in the film was was definitely the scene where Brian uh, has to rape Natalia. And the way the way we shot it is, we have a laugh. I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, I mean, because it wasn't, it, it was actually pretty easy to scene to do in the whole film from an actual filming point of view. Because it's a very tight shot. Brian's on a cushion. Natalie's lying beside him. I think she's having a, a bit of crack and talking music in between. Because it's all about the moment just when they're acting. And it was more just kind of going, uh, just trying to get them to lie beside each other and like. So they're not hurting their knees because she had, like, did, had leggings and stuff on. It's shot in close-up because it's not about seeing anything physical. It's about seeing the emotions behind their faces, seeing what's happening, seeing the disempowering effect that this has on Natalia. It's not about seeing anything. I don't want to see it. It's not about it being sexual. It's about the actual emotional feeling that happens. This scene had a very, very strong reason behind it. It was meant to occur at the crescendo of, of the height of what man can do to another man. Like the, the absolute violence the worst thing that can occur in humanity, which is the disempowering idea of being raped after everything else. Because the creature, the, the creature is not something that they just stumble upon, like, uh, you know, you walk through a door and oh, there's a grave. It had to, it's meant to be symbolic of when there's so much negative energy and, and, and a bad aura and bad, bad feelings and bad vibes that this summons the creature, that it, it's drawn to this negative place. He's almost like a moth to a flame, he's drawn to violence, he's drawn, he's drawn to this negative build up in the room um, and comes back with like, he brings the worst kind of negativity with him that anyone could possibly imagine and it's, it's just pure evil and, and that really intrigued me because we were coming from two very strong scenes. You know, we need to give the audience a bit of breathing space. Um, and to just slow the film down a moment before we actually so show the creature proper. So it's not like bang, 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 bang. Here's everything on the plate, Do you know? And we also wanted to give the real idea of where these people were. So we have this scene then when they're going downstairs and they're going around um, the, basically the whole, the whole of the downstairs. To really give a sense of place, a sense of where they are, um, and a sense that they could get impossibly lost in here, you know. And and the only thing keeping them going is the is the light in the camera, you know. And and that anything could be around any corner. Like what could possibly happen to these people? And then they they, they find that room, um, with the with the symbols on the wall, and, and they they see the creature for the first time, and they realize that things can get a whole lot worse. And they are about to get a whole lot worse. The, the conception of the creature was very important. Myself and Franco, the producer, we decided that we wanted something that was, was very real. It was based on, on a human form. Uh, we got references of various films, but I wanted, we wanted something like Nosferatu. It's something that's so disturbing because it might not get to you. It's almost slow, but it, it's got this kind of horrific horrific twisted nature to it, like a Nosferatu. And the idea of the creature was, he is very slow and he is weird. He's, he's a dead thing, there's nothing living about him. Um, but he can move, he can just move by, a, it's not explained what it is, it could be teleportation or he's just incredibly super quick when you don't look, or he's almost a ghost. Um, with Nadia, Nadia, Nadia is amazing. And the makeup conception came talking to Nadia, how he could develop and make Patrick Moynan, wonderful actor, how he could make Patrick as 
grotesque and weird as possible and make him as, as almost insect-like. So she d designed this latex mask for him, which is really hard to do with the, with the nose and the, the mouth, and he had these teeth and everything. And he had a thing on his skull cap, thing, and he, all sorts of things, and he was in this little thong, and just covered in, in blood and latex. And it's to make him look as dead as possible, like he was still melting, like he was physically uh, disintegrating before decomposing before our eyes. For Patrick, I mean, it was a very difficult shoot because uh, it was very cold. I wanted it to be in a place, an environment that, that was, that was uh, cold, hard, it was imbued with, with, this, with this feeling of what we were shooting. So you came away from actually feeling you were involved in something. You know, the place was scary. We were actually physically afraid being there. It was not a nice place to be. It was grotesque. And he has to spend three or four hours of makeup each night. And that is very short time to do this because we're shooting a very tight time frame to get into this grotesque nature. <laughs> I want it to be a terrifying, engaging film, which leaves you thinking about it. So there's moments in it, it's not about making you jump, it's about getting into your soul, it's kind of harrowing. And if you really connect to the film, watching the right time with the right, the right light, you know, at night time with the right sound on your own, it really connects with you because it stays with you. And it's not just about the horror, it's about what man can do to man, it's about everything about it. And it gets deep within your bones. And I think it's very strong that way because it works in that regard. I don't, I think Irish horror can be explored because we've so much, we've so much history with ghosts and with banshees and with, with, with these tales. There's an awful lot to do. And I'd like to try and explore that a bit more because there's a huge, there's a lot of things that can be created with Irish history to do a horror. Um, and I, I think there's a, there's a, a chance in the market for to do that. I, I'd like, hopefully this film can inspire some people to try and create things. This film is about trying to create something. It, it was an idea and it's a little bit different and it was just trying to, trying to make something um, that would stay with you and was just a little bit different. Listen, the classical. I just pressed the button and I got up here, and then you fucking opened the door. Seriously, can I have a fucking bit of privacy or something? Uh, not a cup of tea. Everywhere you go, fucking. Yeah, tired. whatever, mate. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and like a 20 minutes later, I opened the door. <laughs> he was still standing there in the same position. <laughs> <laughs> Look, <laughs> he's got snot coming out of his nose. That's how much he's laughing. <laughs>